Hey guys, welcome to Factorising Part 2. If you haven't checked out Factorising Part 1 yet, do go back and check that out. Make sure you're really happy with that and then come back and play with this video. So in this video we're going to look at questions that ask us to either factorise fully or factorise completely. So these are a little bit harder and they would be worth more marks. The reason they would say fully or completely is that we will have, instead of just one common factor between the terms, we may have two or more common factors that need to be factorised. Now in these examples, we're going to go through each one step by step. Uh, so let's get cracking and see how we do. Okay, so first of all then, we want to factorise 2x squared plus 10x. Now this is definitely one that would say factorise fully, because we do have two common factors. So, hopefully you can see that we've got a numeric factor, so we have a, a, a common number that goes into both terms, and we also have a common algebraic factor. There is also a common algebra term in uh, each term. So, let's go for the numbers first of all. What is common between 2 and 10? Well, it's 2. So... Let's take out a factor of 2 first and see what we get left with. So when we take out this factor of 2, we uh, divide the expression by 2. So we get a single x squared and then add 5x. So that's cool. We've now got no common number term between our single x squared and our 5x. But we now do have our algebraic term. Now our common algebraic term between x squared and x is x. Remember that x squared is saying x times x. So we're also going to take this factor of x out of front. Now remember, if you already have a factor outside, if you take another one out, it multiplies it. So on the outside then, when we take out this x, we're going to get 2x on the outside. And then we divide the two terms by x. So x squared divided by x is x. And 5x divided by x will give us 5. Now remember, if they're uh, factorising, uh, we can check our answer by expanding it back out. Uh, so if you want to practice your expansions, expand that back out. Make sure you get the expression we started with. Cool. On with the next. 15a squared minus 9a. Okay, so again we've got two common factors here. We've got a numeric factor and an algebraic factor. So let's deal with the number first. What is common to 15 and to 9? So what goes into 15 that also goes into 9? Well, the answer to that is 3. So we take a 3, put it out of the front of our brackets... And divide then the expression by 3. So 15a squared divided by 3 will leave us with 5a squared. And then minus 9a divided by 3 will leave us with minus 3a. Like that. Okay, so we've dealt with the common numeric factor. Now we need to find our common algebraic factor. So what is common between a squared and a? Well, this time it's a, so we take an a out the front, which now leaves us with a 3a out there, and divide the expression through by a. So 5a squared divided by a will leave us with 5a, and then 3a, or minus 3a, divided by a will leave us with minus 3, like that. Jobs are good, em. Okay, example 3. 5y minus 30y squared. So again, we've got two common factors here. So let's start with our numeric factor. What is common between 5 and 30? Well, it's 5. So we're going to put a 5 on the outside. Now, we're going to divide the expression by 5. So 5y divided by 5 is a single y. Now, minus 30y squared divided by 5. It's going to leave us with minus 6y squared, like that. So that's the numeric factor sorted out. Now we need to sort out the uh, algebraic factor. 
So what's common between y and y squared? Well, it's y. So we also take a y out the front. Now y divided by y is 1. And 6 y squared divided by y will leave us with 6 y like that. Jobs are good, him. Okay, on with the next. Okay, so 7x cubed minus 49x squared. So, we've got something slightly different here. We've got higher powers to deal with. Okay, but let's, uh, let's not panic. So, what's our common factor between 7 and 49? Well, it's 7. So we're going to take a 7 out in front, then divide the expression by 7. So 7x cubed divided by 7 leaves us with a single x cubed. Now minus 49x squared divided by 7 leaves us with minus 7x squared, like that. Okay, so now we need to figure out what is common between x cubed and x squared. Well remember that x cubed is saying x times x times x and x squared is saying x times x. So the highest common factor there is x squared. So we take an x squared out of the front as well. Now x cubed divided by x squared leaves us with a nice normal x and then minus 7x squared divided by x squared leaves us with minus 7. So it factorises to 7x squared times x minus 7. Cool. Okay, what about this one then? So this one again is a little bit different. Here we have no common numeric factors. So there's no common number that goes into both of our terms. What we've got is two common algebraic factors. So let's sort out the x's first. So what is common to x and x cubed? Well it's x. So we're going to smash an x on the outside. Then we divide the expression through by x. So x y squared divided by x leaves us with a y squared and then minus 2x cubed y divided by x leaves us with minus 2x squared y like that okay so that's the common x factor taken out now we need to work out what our highest common y factor is so we've got a y squared and uh, just a normal y so the highest common factor there is just y so we're also going to take a y out of the front like that. Now y squared divided by y is just y. Now minus 2x squared y divided by y is just minus 2x squared. So there is now no common factor inside the bracket between y and minus 2x squared. So we know that we are fully factorised. Jobs are good em. Okay, last one for this video then. Um, we've got a three term expression and we've also got three common factors to take out. So, let us first we'll deal with the number factor then. What is the highest common factor between 5, 25 and 10? Well, it's 5. So we're going to take a 5 out of the front and then we need to divide the expression, remember, by 5. So 5a squared b divided by 5 is a single a squared b. 25ab cubed divided by 5 will leave us with 5ab cubed. And then minus 10ab divided by 5 leaves us with minus 2ab, like that. So that's the common number factor factorised out. Let's now go for the a's. So we've got an a squared, we've got an a, and we've got another a at the end. So 
So what is the highest common factor of A that we have running through here? Well, it's just an A. So we're going to take an A out of the front with our 5. So it's going to become 5A out of the front. And now we need to divide through by A. So A squared B divided by A will leave us with A B. Then we've got 5AB cubed divided by A. That will just leave us with 5B cubed. And then minus 2AB divided by A. That will just leave us with minus 2B. Like that. And then we've got our final common factor to get rid of then. Every term has got some sort of B attached to it. So we've got a B there, we've got a B cubed in the middle, and then we've got a B at the end. Okay, so our highest common factor there is B. So a B comes out the front and attaches to our 5A, so we get 5AB out the front. Now AB divided by B is A. Now 5B cubed divided by B is 5 b squared and then minus 2b divided by b is minus 2. So there we go, we have fully factorised that three term expression. Okay guys, that's it for this video, hope it's helped. Was this video helpful? If so, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment letting me know how you get on. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any videos. For any further information, you can find me on Facebook or Twitter. Search for Maths with Melv. Cheers, guys.